If you are trying to become a data analyst in 2025 by grinding away on Kaggle projects, spending a lot of time on things like Lead Code and Data Lemur, and doing a lot of certifications, I hate to break it to you, but you might be focusing on the wrong things. As someone who's helped hire many data analysts and also helped almost 100 students along in their data journeys, I've seen what actually moves the needle beyond just the technical skills. And so today, I wanna to walk you through the four stage roadmap that you can use to strategize your job hunt and become a data analyst by the end of this year. Stick around and I will also break Break down how long you should be spending on each step so that you can feel confident that you're on the right path. I'm Christine and in this channel we talk about the strategies that you can use to accelerate your path to becoming a data analyst. So after you've done certifications and you have these technical skills down in Excel, SQL, and a visualization software, what's next? How do you learn to actually piece it all together? I think one of the places where most people go wrong is that they start working on a bunch of portfolio projects that are done in a vacuum. They don't actually use these projects to help other people. The thing is, high managers are gonna be looking at whether or not you know how to apply your abilities to a real team in a corporate setting. So as soon as you have some of these skills, start finding and creating opportunities to apply these skills in a real world setting. There's there's three different ways to do this. One of them is volunteering. Then the other is to create your own freelance or contract work and doing things like unpaid internships. And another way, which is arguably the best way, is to find ways to work with data on your current job. For volunteering, that's using platforms like Blue Bonnet Data, which is actually a data fellowship where you work as a campaign data analyst and you get mentorship along the way. Catch a Fire and Volunteer Match are also both great platforms where organizations are always posting jobs and projects in which they need someone to help them with their analytics. Volunteering is great because there's not a lot of pressure to perform because you're not getting paid for it, but you have the opportunity to learn and most importantly, work with real data and real stakeholders. And then in terms of freelance work or pitching to startups, this is where you can offer your data analytics work for free or for low cost because the goal is not money. The goal is actually real world experience, which you can then translate to money in full full-time salary later on. One example is a student, Madeline, who was part of my fourth cohort that just ended. And she met a high manager at a networking event and worked her way to an unpaid internship. So she conducted analysis in which she surfaced trends and insights on NFT sales, which was then used to improve the educational future of the platform. In the end, she has a bullet on her resume that says this, conceptualized and built an interactive Tableau dashboard and accompanying insights report, revealing trends in revenue, order volume, and buyer behavior behavior patterns, as well as segmentation analysis by genre. Both were shared with the company's Discord group of 200 plus artists to educate them on historic market trends and guide them in positioning their work for maximum market impact. Now, this is much more impressive to a high manager compared to a portfolio project that has no real impact. When you're going for unpaid internships or contract work, there's really four key things that you want to make sure you're going to be able to work with. Large data sets, so ideally data sets that are over 200k records technical tools, we're using something like Excel, SQL, and a visualization software, and then the ability to actually work with real people. And finally, the opportunity to present those insights to real people so that at the end, you have a deliverable that you can also then talk about in interviews and bring that experience to your next data job. And then the third way of getting real hands-on experience is to find ways to interact with data on your current job. A lot of times, if you're working on a finance team, for example, or a marketing team, you might also have access to the SQL database at your company. I would say one of the most effective ways to get your first job into data is actually to transition laterally at your current job. You can also even pitch your ability to bring more data analytics skills onto your current role. Another student in my last cohort, Tanisha, was able to bring a dashboard to her manager, a dashboard that she built on her own just to pitch the power of working with more data and making more data-driven decisions on the day-to-day -day job. And this eventually helped her reshape her role into more of an analyst position, which is then much more directly aligned to working as a data analyst. Ultimately, hiring managers are not just looking for your technical chops. They want to see how you take those technical chops and apply them in the real ecosystem of a company. And so spending three months in an unpaid internship where you come out of it with one really strong data project beats spending three months making, you know, four portfolio projects in a vacuum any day. For career transitioners, one of the most important things is going to be your ability to translate this experience that you have in your projects, your internships, contract work, or your previous roles in a way that a data manager actually understands. So after you spend some time building projects, getting your hands dirty with real data and real stakeholders, that's where you should start focusing on this translation. There's a few key things to keep in mind here. One is a really strong resume that stands out for data jobs is one in which at least 60% of the resume is really aligned to a data analyst role. 
And so that's why that experience from the first step is so important. This is where you want to aim for each bullet to have as many of these characteristics as possible. One is a mention of a large data set in terms of the kind of data set that was actually used in that project. The second is some detail around the tools that were used in that project. The third is the mention of the kind of stakeholders that you are working with. And then the fourth is the mention of the final business impact that that project had. You can watch my resume bullet video to get a deeper dive look at what these kinds of bullets look like. Then for any non-data analyst experiences, the way to translate this is to focus on the skills that are especially soft skills that a lot of data analyst roles will need. So that's things like anytime you've had to present or communicate your work to different stakeholders, anytime you're working across teams or connect large meetings or having to think about things like project management. And then lastly, anytime you've improved a process, a lot of data analysts is actually not just about the analysis, but about taking a process like a report and automating it. And so anytime you've done any of these three categories, those are things that are really relevant to a data job, even though you might have done it in a previous role that is an analyst by title. One way to go about this translation is to use ChatGPT. So you can always feed ChatGPT the job descriptions that you're interested in applying to, feed it your resume and say, can you help me translate a few of my bullets to be as data relevant as possible given my experience? And then ChatGPT will do a pretty good job of taking certain concepts and making sure you're using the right data labels so that it resonates with a data manager. I would say about 60% of students in my program who land jobs within eight weeks of starting the program usually do this through some form of networking. And there's a few ways of doing this. One is to send out value-driven networking messages to high managers and recruiters on LinkedIn, which I have a networking video about. Another is to go to events where you can hopefully meet people and set up some time for a coffee chat, which can then lead to things like an unpaid internship, which at least starts building your steps to becoming a full-time data analyst. You can also be doing informational chats, like coffee chats with people, like other data analysts at companies that you're interested in working in, where again, you can send a value-driven message, really pitching yourself as someone who might be able to help on the team in the future, even if there isn't currently a job opening and expressing curiosity to learn more about what they do on the job and their journey as a data analyst. A lot of times these chats actually funnel into an interview where you already have a leg up because you have someone on that team vouching for you. Here's an example of what a student from my last cohort, Tyreek, said about how a coffee chat has helped him in his journey. So I had the coffee chat today and used your advice and voice note to guide the conversation. Overall, it went well. She was impressed with my background and I was primarily driving the discussion with questions. Through our discussion, I learned that in her world, there's a fine line between data science, data analytics, and business intelligence. And most of her ongoing projects involve building data models that inform product development decisions for the bank. By the end of the conversation, I was asked to share a copy of my resume via email. There's currently no immediate openings within the team, but I think it's great to at least be considered for a future opening. Overall, this is an excellent learning experience for me. And I would categorize this as a really good win when it comes to networking. And when it comes to actual job hunting, what you want to use is something that I call the 60-40 rule. A lot of times when people are spraying praying, they're just applying to roles all over the data analytics spectrum, not really paying attention to whether or not the role is really specifically a fit for their specific resume. And spraying and praying is one of the worst ways to go because you're just diluting your time and energy across a ton of roles that probably aren't even going to be the best fit for you. Instead, the 60-40 rule just refers to applying to 60% of jobs where you actually are a very strong fit where you can check off 70% of the bullets that they've asked for. Then the other 40% applying to jobs where you're slightly overqualified or slightly underqualified. In the beginning of the job hunt process, the most important thing is to just start landing interviews. And you can do that by applying to jobs that are just one degree removed from where you are currently. So for example, if you're a finance analyst or a marketing analyst, a data analyst job is just one jump away. But if you're someone who hasn't had corporate experience before, you're going to need to work on building your steps up that ladder. So first, by getting corporate experience, let's say, in an unpaid internship or with a startup, so that when you apply to a data analyst position, you can really then go and check off at least 70% of what they're asking for. You should also track your interview rates. So if after the first 50 applications, you're getting a less than 7% resume to interview conversion rate, then that means that something needs to change. It doesn't mean that you're doomed, but it means that either your resume is not working or you just don't have enough experience. And you need to focus a little bit more on that first stage. 
So this is how it all looks together if I were to start with the technical fundamentals and then map my journey for the rest of the year for what I would focus on. A few months getting real world experience, then spending a few weeks actually doing this transition and really honing in on how this transition works on my resume. Then starting and focusing on strategic networking after I actually have something of value to provide in those chats. And then lastly, spending a few weeks to a few months on the actual job search where I'm using the 60-40 strategy to optimize my job hunt process. If you want more tips on how to stand out in the job market as a data analyst, and you want to be invited to a free Q&A session that I'll be doing answering your questions about working in data, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter below, and I'll see you in the next video.